Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Bad for Your Health Entertainment. I'm Tom, and tonight I am joined by the lovely Kelly Lane, actress in the upcoming Jason Pitts film, Voorhees, Night of the Beast, has appeared in numerous short films and commercials. Kelly, how are you tonight? I am doing great, Tom. How about you? I'm okay. I'm okay. It's a Sunday night. Can't complain. We're talking. We're going to talk a little movies. We're going to talk a little bit of your background, a little history, whatever happens. Cool. Yeah. Just, just to start off, Kelly, tell me a little bit about your background and how you got interested in acting and some of the other things that you are known for. All right. Sure. Uh, so I, I guess when I was in my 20s, I started modeling. And so, um, you know, as time went on, it was one of those things, well, how long is this going to last, you know? And uh, I'd always loved movies. I grew up watching kind of uh, you know, action movies and things that blow up and shooting guns and, you know, all that kind of thing. And um, I live in Birmingham, Alabama. So I was looking for an acting class online and I came across an improv class. And so I ended up doing improv for about eight years. Uh, that really helped me kind of get out of my shell. And uh, cause I used to be really quiet and an introvert and just totally different than I am now. <laughs> um, but I uh, did improv for about eight years. Uh, it really taught me how to, you know, um, what I'm gonna say next, listening and, uh, you know, doing all the different things, listening for the audience's response, you know, did that go over well or did, was that not so great, you know? And, um, so then I got involved in an acting class around here from uh, a working actor. And uh, I did that for about three, four years and um, got involved meeting a lot of people around town uh, that led to, you know, meeting others around the United States. And uh, the ball has just kept rolling. Take, so. me to the, take me to the improv days, though, that long stretch, though. Is there yeah. is there a feeling of complete and utter fear that first time doing the improv i can just like is it that feeling like you're in the cafeteria and everyone's just pointing and laughing getting ready to it uh, yes how did, you, how did you break that glass ceiling how did that must have taken years, years. it took years <laughs> to break that because yes getting up and and speaking in front of people you know that's like one of the top three uh most feared things in the world so Absolutely. Yes. Um, and I could tell you, I'm just going to be transparent here. And because uh, a lot of my improv uh, mates will, uh, I know exactly what I'm talking about, but it, you know, my heart would always start racing right before I got out there. And I would, I can't believe I'm about to tell this about myself. I would start burping. Like, it, <laughs> I don't know what would <laughs> But I just started burping. I don't know if it was my nerves and um, I could I, or I would pop a mint, you know, like an Altoid or something before I went out there because God forbid that I, I'm in a you know scene with somebody and one person can smell my breath, you know, but um, I would just start burping. And, and um, there were some times I got out there and I just went absolutely blank. Um, and so I would just have to uh, depend on my uh, my teammate uh, to help me out here. You know, that's always uh, we always called it pimp your pimp your mate uh, to help them come along. Help them so, help you help the team. Yes, yes. So it it was it was really bad the first few years, like real bad. <laughs> Never made you want to quit though. Um, oh, absolutely. It made me want to quit all the time every week because I performed weekly and it was like, I'm not coming back next week. I'm not coming back because this is just, I, I mean, I felt like the biggest idiot. But you just kept going back week after week. I did. I kept going back week after week. So now um, whenever I talk to, you know, uh, up and coming aspiring actors that or musicians or anybody that's trying to, you know, go after something, I'm like, just don't quit. Just keep on. There is um, a story I'll tell uh, that happened a few years ago. It's probably been five, six years now, I guess. But um just to uh because i wasn't doing improv anymore mm -hmm. but i went down to uh what's it called uh red mountain theater group and 
uh, I auditioned for one of their, uh, what was it? I want to say it was hairspray or something like that. I am not a singer. But I went in there, I stood in line, and I sang somewhere over the rainbow acapella, which is the hardest song ever. And, you know, I, I didn't get the role. But you know what, when I left there, I felt I was a high as a kite. Absolutely, because I had accomplished what I went in there to accomplish. And that was to push myself out of my comfort zone. And so I just I have to continue to do that today. If there's something that I am you know, afraid of, I mean, even doing this, like speaking in front of people that used to terrify me. So, um, I've just, I've had to make myself do it. And I had to be my cheer, my own cheerleader to, you know, push that and, um, keep going. You got to believe in yourself and then you know, other people will follow. Absolutely. Like what we were talking about before, uh, we got on is that sometimes it, it just takes one person and sometimes it just takes one person to believe in you, you know, and to kind of be like, give you that, do good. You know, you did a great job. Don't worry about it. There's always next time. Yeah. Sometimes that's all we need to hear, you know, but uh, again, too, like our own self-talk, sometimes that can do, yep, do a yep. thing. It, so, it, sometimes you can be your own worst enemy. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't need so, any villains. <laughs> no, I, no, there are plenty of villains in the world. We don't need our own. Right, right. What were some of the movies you grew up on? You said action, adventure, and things blowing up. Are we talking Sylvester Stallone, Bruce Willis, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Oh, yes. So Harrison Ford, you know, oh. obviously, yes. Um, anything Harrison Ford, I love Harrison Ford. Um, but yes, Bruce Willis, I love all the, the Die Hard movies. Um, anything, I'm trying to think of back in the day, day even um when i was younger i just uh i i grew up watching shows with my dad and my brother yeah. and so they were all you know either westerns uh action movies things blowing up and so that was just what i gravitated towards i loved it uh it it entertained me yeah. so yeah, I grew, I grew up watching a lot of the reruns that on television and those movies too, like the Stallones and you know Don Johnson and all that. Like those guys are still like pretty big. Amazing. Like, those guys yes. are still, and no one really took their place. No, I, no, and I don't I don't think anybody can because I mean who can redo like David Hasselhoff and Knight Rider? You know they, they tried and it was horrible. It lasted like yes. four episodes. <laughs> you have Val Kilmer doing Kit, and I'm like. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Cruise, Top yeah. Gun. There's another classic action. You yes. Know? Yes. Tom Cruise. Oh, my gosh. And Tom Cruise keeps killing it. I mean, I know some people don't like him or whatever for personal reasons. Yeah. But decade after decade after decade, he is continuing to be, like, right there in the forefront. So, and it's, and it's he uh, does great stuff. I mean, like, Mission Impossible. Who Who hates Mission Impossible, you know? I just can't believe at his age we're going to see Captain Pete Mitchell. And, uh, you know, the trailer and all that. And I kind of go, Man, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. But I'm kind of in. Yeah. You know, just, just the nostalgia goes a very long way. <laughs> sure, sure. But yeah, Tom Cruise just keeps reinventing himself and the Mission Impossibles, night and day. Um, mm -hmm. The Mummy was a little eh. Um, oh, I thought Mummy was really good. It, it struck me as a Mission Impossible, though. Like when I think oh. of a Mummy film, I think of guys wrapped up in toilet paper going. Sure. But then yeah, Brendan Fraser is like sort of the 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 Harrison oh, Ford yeah. of the late '90s in a way. You know that that Rick O'Connell character is just yes. that movie was just rich with the that pulpy 1930s 40s adventure yes uh, serials that i just i absolutely love and adore i could watch that over and over and over again yeah though that movie is almost flawless in my opinion mm -hmm. I, I totally agree totally what about agree. the what about james bond like the roger moores to me don't pierce brosnan was was bond on your yes i enjoyed watching bond um i thought it was a little um what's the Morning. what's the uh, in ways, I guess, but I loved seeing the the pieces of like, you know, the pen that turned into, you know, some kind of weapon or, yeah. you know, the, the car. Yes, 
that that was very creative and very uh that was interesting that was entertaining but it wasn't one those weren't one of the ones that i could watch over and over and over so when you were younger and wanting to be an actress were were being in those type of movies were being in those type of movies were the movies you wanted to be in yes like we're oh, talking yeah. you wanted to be sigourney weaver or or linda hamilton yeah. Angelina Jolie. Um, Angelina Jolie. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were, and that's that's one of the uh, reels I have on uh, IMDb is me shooting, getting into a bar scene fight, you know. And I have seen that. <laughs> oh, I, I love, I don't know what it is. I just enjoy shooting guns. I got to shoot a, um, oh gosh, uh, what's the, the automatics, the semi-automatics uh, in a music video. And uh, I had like a uh, a horse head type kind of thing. It was one of those we're in the middle of the road and we were lined up and I've got a semi-automatic, but I've got earplugs in yep. because it's so loud. And so I've got my, and so all I can see is a, you know, tiny sliver out of my mask and, you know, it's the go. And I pull the trigger and about four other people that I'm standing in line with are pulling triggers and it is so... <laughs> It is so loud. But I love yes, it. They, yes, it is. It's it, gunfire is very loud when it's in person. It's it's mm -hmm. not like what you see in the motion in the movies where it's you know you know it's not Keanu Reeves doing right, you know, <laughs> or Christian Bale in Equilibrium doing gun kata or whatever the hell that was. But I, yeah, it's it's not like what you see in the movies. Yes, definitely not. No, John, um, not like John Wick. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and the one, uh, the one we were just talking about uh, in the uh, atonement on my IMDb page, yep. those, that was one of those where uh, the sound was dubbed in, you know, and so you are working with uh, a prop. Yeah. That's not, you know, the same weight, uh, doesn't sound the same, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so you've got to act like that's you've a got weighty, the real thing. Yeah, you've got to play it off like it's real so that in post-production, they can add all those things and it becomes real all the time. It's funny you say that because in several lower budget films that have that, the sound and the gun, it's almost like you can tell some people aren't holding it right. It's yep. whether the way the wrist is kind of just, just there's, there's a tell, there's a tell. Sure. Yeah, so you you definitely have to to watch those things. I, I know in uh, Voorhees, uh, when I'm holding a gun there, and uh during some of the cuts some people you know were taking photos and all and so i would post them on my facebook page and i had somebody call me out about my trigger finger you know being on the the uh the trigger, trigger. instead of being straight you know and i was like we're on a cut okay like give me a break <laughs> <laughs> get me to take me to Voorhees though how did you meet jason pitts though he was part of that class Yes. Uh, well, no, not part of the class. Um, Jason, uh, I met him a few years ago. Uh, we were actually filming a short film here in Birmingham. And so uh, him and a lot of other great actors and actresses came from Arkansas mm -hmm. uh, to be a part of that short film. And we just, we became a family. It was, um, we kind of, we bonded uh we did out of that short film we did a few other short films together and so uh we just we got used to working together and um it just it everybody meshed and flowed together and uh then come to find out how really creative all of these people really are i mean like jason pitts he's not just a great filmmaker he's a great writer i yes. mean like the man can write like nobody else and um he, he asked a couple of weeks ago, he was like, you know, about some of the interviews that he does. And I'm like, Jason, you're a great speaker. Like once you get on a roll with something, I'm like, and he was like, yeah, but I'm a writer. I was like, you're a great writer, but you're also a great speaker too. Like it, it translates. I, and he was I like, no, he was, it's not the same. <laughs> I thought he was a very well-spoken guy. And absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I know he had mentioned to me, his dream is to direct an episode of the walking dead. And I was just yes. sort of like, you've, yeah. got, you've got the look, dude. You've got that that look. He can do it. Absolutely. I went to um, stunt school in Georgia. And, um, but she didn't know that, huh? I did, actually. I actually put it in oh. the uh, description. Oh, awesome. Okay. Well, <laughs> my bad. That's um, okay. But yeah, 
while I was at stunt school, we had one of the guys, I, I don't remember his name now. I think I have one of his photos on my um, Instagram, but he had joined us one day during stunt school and we lit him on fire and um, that whole like pyrotechnics and all that kind of thing. Um, I wasn't, I was just a spectator just because everybody uh, in the stunt uh field you have to be so everything is about safety and precision yes yes and so uh i was just kind of an onlooker but everybody that was involved was in full flammable not flammable non-flammable fire, fire prevention and all that yes the heads and everything and so as soon as he was finished uh being lit on fire and walking and all that good stuff uh, they immediately, you know, put him out with the fire extinguishers, but it was just exhilarating to watch and uh, be a part of that. So. Take me to that. What made you want to go to a stunt school? Were you Are you an adrenaline junkie? I think I am. I love <laughs> roller coasters and adventure and all that good stuff. Um, stunt skydiving? Oh, uh, I don't know about skydiving. I've never yeah. done it. Yeah, no. that's not something that I've ever aspired to. But, <laughs> um stunt school I can do, but it was one of those things like I, I wanted to be able to be an actress that could do my own stunts if I needed to. Um, so I can do, you know, shoulder roll over hood of a car. Um, I did come back uh, with a minor case of whiplash when I came back from stunt school because of all of the, uh, what do we do? You have to fall off, you know, the back of a- um, Fucking roll scaffolding and all that kind of stuff and then we did the whole uh what i i don't even know how high it was and you have to dive into the big uh air the big uh, blue mat yes it was nuts oh my gosh that was that was probably one of the craziest things i've ever done did so. they teach you how to drive at stunt school like so you could be like steve mcqueen well actually <laughs> that was Lynn. I know, right? That yeah. Would have been awesome. Um, that was actually in the next course. Uh, that's in the advanced course. The advanced this was just course. kind of like the the uh, intermediate uh, class. So, uh, but we were instead of uh, cranking the car and stuff, we were pushing the car. So, because there again, there's safety there. So, because you don't want to run in car. Yeah, you don't want to be going eighty doing the. Yes, a roll over the car and get run over. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, so, it was, so did the stunt work, the stunt class come before the acting class, or was it going acting um, class then stunt work? It was acting class then stunt work, and my acting coach was actually the one that kind of uh, said, you know, you should probably, you know, go to stunt school because anytime I was asked, you know, like what kind of roles would you like to play, I would say Black Widow or um you know Lara Croft or you know whatever and so he was kind of like you need to you need to go to stunt school yeah so I was like okay I can do that but did they teach you like fighting style too or is that like in the yes. advanced advanced because that was that punch? yeah that was why I wanted to go because I wanted to learn how to do all of the uh the fight scenes and all that kind of stuff and so yes I remember the the stretches and everything that we had to do the warmups before we actually got into uh, the fights. And we, our fights, um, we didn't use swords. We used um, uh, like bamboo cane. Yeah. Yes. Like kendo sticks? Yes. yes. And they, they sound really great when they, you know, clack together and stuff. Kind of like so. a mm -hmm. Yeah. But they hit yes. with, if you get hit with it hard, Woo! it leave a mark. Yes. It hurts. I mean, it. Every night I went home, uh, it. I was exhausted and yep. just, um, yeah, uh, ice packs and you know that kind of stuff. You know, I can't sit here and say, "Oh, it was so easy." You know, no, it it it's, um, it takes a lot out of you for sure. Stunt stunt work gets no doesn't get a lot of love that it deserves. It's like it's like watching professional wrestling at the same time and you know sports entertainment. But those guys, you know, they 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 know how to take it and oh, absolutely. And that was one of the great things um, about Voorhees. You just made me think about that. That um, uh, the one of the what am I trying to say? One of the uh, Sasquatch hunters, because I played uh, Bigfoot hunter in Voorhees. <laughs> uh, the guy that plays with me, he is also uh, a 
uh, professional wrestler. And so getting, watching him and uh, James Stokes do all of their stunts together. Yeah. I, that, that I loved that. And then also we kind of have an interaction as well. I don't want to give it away. Uh, so you have to see the movie, but um, he shows me a couple of moves and things like that. And uh, it's just, so much fun you gotta see it take talk about the premise of war he's night of the beast to, for okay. some of the people that don't know about it is it literally just jason versus bigfoot um is there is a, a confrontation with them and i can't tell you you know how no it, spoilers i got you no yeah, spoilers. No spoilers. but um there are a lot of other things because obviously, you know, Jason kills so many people uh, in the movie. It's like everybody gets killed, but yep. um, it it has a great storyline. Um, like I said, Jason Pitts is a is an amazing writer, and so uh, there are a lot of uh, ins and outs of things, and um, it's it's amazing. He he had told me that it's set between eight and nine. Mm -hmm. And from a horror perspective, from the Jason fan perspective, that is after Jason went to Manhattan, before Jason goes to hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he ties it into the continuity in a way that I think would make sense. Like, hey, this is a like potential lost chapter. Yes. Um, and so, you know, I told you I'm not huge on the um, horror background. Did you, did you watch any to get... Uh, a feel for Jason or is it something that he just kind of handed you a script and said, this is what we're doing. Well, for my particular role, um, because I, I didn't have uh, a previous uh, character to go off of. Yeah. I w I was pretty much creating my own character. And um, one of the perks in the uh, raising money for Voorhees Indigo was getting, that, yeah. yes getting to name one of the characters. And so mine was one that uh, was a perk to, to name. And so um, I was talking to Jason, like after, you know, handing me the script or, or I was actually talking to one of the other producers uh, on the film. And I was like, you know, all of these guys have their, uh, they're solidified by either their previous character, you know, who they're playing or what they look like, you know, cause even, um, uh, Jacob, who was playing uh, the one of the uh, Bigfoot hunters, you know, I mean, he's like seven foot tall. And so he, you know why, I mean, like you could tell he's there for a reason, but I was like, you know, my character, I'm this kind I'm five, six and, you know, I'm surrounded by all these men. So what, what is it that's going to solidify my character? And so I had some ideas and uh on set that day i was like hey jason you know i wanted to run some things by you what do you think about this because i i feel like that my character needs a reason you know to be here like she needs the the viewer needs to know oh this is why she's here did you need you, so you felt like your character needs to make a splash whether it's you know the classic intimidation or right and putting someone in their place yes totally and I'm feeling it. I got I know what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so it was like he he said, Yeah, okay, we can do that. And so we, you know, changed up things a little bit. And uh Jacob came in and was like, All right, let's do this, let's do that. And you know, he had all these wrestling moves, and I was like, Heck yeah, let's do this, you know. And take so. me to that though. When you suggest this uh, a change in a script in a, a production of this magnitude, when obviously we're not talking, you know, Black Widow and, and, and things like that. Is sure. there, is it literally like talking to a committee where, you know, you bring it to Jason and it doesn't like shut production down or anything. It's this, this seems like something that resolves itself. And yes. And it was, minutes. it was a quick resolve. It was yeah. one of those things where, you know, I ran it by the other producer, James Stokes, um, to see if it was anything that I should present to Pitts, yeah. to Jason Pitts. And so he was like, absolutely. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about it. And so, um, it was one of those things that we talked over while they were still setting up the shot. And um, we just kind of went through, you know, a few things. And Jason is very much open to, you know, uh, whatever 
makes this thing great, whatever yeah. makes this production great, I'm, I'm all about doing it. And so he's, he's great about, you know, being open-minded and, and hearing out what you, you know, want to bring to the table. And like I said, all of these actors are so creative um, that it's just, it's hard to, to say no to some of the ideas because they're, they're awesome. How long did it take to film this particular project? Do you know? Uh, like, was your cat, were you, were you there for the whole shoot? I, I was there for the whole shoot. Yes. Um, my character did not film every day. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I was definitely there every single day. We filmed in Louisa, uh, Kentucky, and I have fallen in love with Louisa. The, the people in Louisa are just amazing. Um, we, uh, another person to our film family is Marsha Sloan, who, lives in Louisa, who was kind of, who, not kind of, but she is the draw to Louisa and uh, having all of these locations that are amazing to shoot. She just made it happen. Her and her husband, both um, her husband's the the mayor there. And so uh, they know everything about this town and they have done so much to bring so much to their town. And um, I, I wanted to be there every day. I didn't want to leave. So, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds kind of cool though. Like you hear those stories of the the film comes into the city or the town and they're they're welcomed and things like that. So you had that experience in Louisa, Kentucky. Absolutely, and I continue to. Um, we are constantly going to Louisa to film. I've got another film coming up uh, that's going to be filming this year. It's on uh, IMDb, so I can I feel like I can talk about it. But it's Ghosts of the Big Sandy River. There we go. And yes, and um, that is uh, a book that's being, you know, translated over to a movie. And so uh, a lot of my film family is going to be coming back to to film that. So um, that's that's going to be like one of those movies that the whole family can watch. And it has adventure. It has, you know, the. Um, the ins and outs of these children that were following their adventure. And so it's, it's going to be such a great um, film to see for sure. And it's going to be so much fun to film because um, I'm going back to, to film with some of my film family and uh, it's, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Can you talk about your role specifically? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm playing Lola who is uh, two Lola. of the boys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, when I met Eddie, Eddie Hartswell, he is the writer. And Lola is, I want to say, loosely based off of his mother. And so he said that I resembled her very much so. And so I was like, okay, great. And uh, so I'm playing the mother of two of the boys. There's three kids. Uh, I want to say a fourth one. But there are three kids that go on this adventure of a lifetime. And I play uh, two of the boys' mom. So, um, yeah. And then also, uh, James Stokes, who plays, uh, Jason Voorhees. Yep. And Night uh, of the Beast. Be, yep. will be playing, uh, the dad. And I'm trying to think of his name in the movie. I forget. But anyway, he's playing the dad. And so, um, film family all back together again. You said this was based off a book, Ghost of the Sandy, uh, River? Ghost of the Big Sandy River. There's Ghost a river there in Louisa. Uh, and I want to say it's the river that uh, separates West Virginia and uh, Kentucky. And uh, it's called the Big Sandy River. And um, I heard a lot about this place uh, before I even got there. And it's there's so much um, uh, backstories and there's like this, the locks and there's so much <laughs> that I learned so much when I go. Uh, but the people there have just been amazing. And like I said, going back to film, I, I, it's like my home away from home. I can't wait. You know? How long will this shoot take, take place or when will, when will it start shooting? Do you know? Well, we're hoping to shoot sometime this year, um, probably summer, fall, something like that. And um, I, I, I would say probably two weeks or so to shoot. Um, so, yeah. It'll be it'll be a fun one. So you've been around you've been around the the country the been filming these films. Where you got a great location besides Louisa that you've been to for any of shoot modeling anything? 
Um, well, another one is uh, recently was a reunion from hell and a uh, reunion from hell too. And it was filmed in Severe, Severeville, which is right there in Gatlinburg. And I love Gatlinburg, love Gatlinburg. Just when we were there filming, there was snow, you know, you're in the mountains and the sun coming in. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. It's what you want. Yes. I you about reunion from hell too. How did that come to you? That came um, from just being knowing the right people and the, 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 uh, yeah, the connections. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely all about who you know. Um, but uh, James Stokes was in Reunion from Hell too, yes. and uh, you know he was in Voorhees, Night of the Beast as well. And so um, I I got introduced to Hayden through him, and so. Um, Hayden was just like, yeah, come on. We'd love to, you know, have you on board. Like I said, I mean, he, Hayden's, Hayden is awesome. He's another, another one that, um, is such a great person and, uh, I love working with him. So, uh, it just, it just meshed, you know, the stars just aligned for you. Yes, absolutely. And I wish I could tell you more about that one because oh, that one was so much fun. I well. get it. There's a lot of spoilers attached to certain films and like the embargo, whatever you want to call it. And you can't, yeah. you can't reveal too much. But do you have anything else in the uh, works? Um, Right now, as far as movies go, I hope I'm not leaving anything out. Um, I have a few commercials that are going to be coming out uh that should be coming out in the next few weeks um we have some uh around here in birmingham we have uh a what is it um an outlet mall that i just finished shooting uh, a commercial for and uh, it was a lot of fashion and clothing and that kind of stuff and i'm hoping uh they put my picture up on the billboard right there at the exit where the <laughs> Where the outlet wall is, that would just be, you know, another great thing that I would enjoy. <laughs> Take me to talk to me a little bit about filming commercials. I, I, it's something that I don't really know a lot about, but I kind of get a gist of it. Okay. Is it something that can conceivably not be knocked out in one day? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And they are definitely very lucrative. So, um, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can make a living off of doing commercials. I, um, I enjoy doing commercials because, like you said, yes, sometimes it it takes a day to really to knock it out. Um, and again, I get to meet so many cool people and those connections and, you know, really uh, how I got that was through, well, that was, um, that one was different. That was through actors access, but a lot of times, uh, commercials have come to me through Facebook where somebody is looking for, you know, an actress or, you know, sometimes uh, they go through agencies to get models, mm -hmm. but then there are commercials that they need somebody that is more of an actor and not just, you know, a model. And so um, uh, there have been posts on Facebook and somebody will recommend me that I have worked with previously and I'll submit, you know, call them up and um, they enjoy my professionalism. And so they they hire me. So interesting i've never i i it's one thing that i i know you know tv shows take you know 12 days to film an episode movies take sometimes years but it's like yeah. you know, commercials that just you see them for about 30 seconds on the tv and just kind of gone not knocking commercials i'm just saying like they don't get love i don't think sometimes right no i totally agree um but it uh because like you said they're like 30 seconds long but sometimes they can take a few days to, to shoot, especially if you're doing like a couple of different segments, you know, it's yeah. uh, generally the same commercial, but you want it to look like you've done, you know, uh, a couple of different commercials uh, throughout the year and you've only taken two, three days to, to film them just to knock it all out at one time. Interesting. Mm -hmm. What's the commercial that uh, you were working on? You said, what was the, the, Oh, I'm just I'm having a brain mo moment. Um, you got one coming out. The outlet, the outlet mall. The outlet one, the mall, yes. the mall. So that's yes. that's gonna put the billboard. Sorry, I just kind of like had a short term thing. The the big billboard on the exit down there on the highway in Birmingham. 
Yes. Well, um, I, they haven't told me they were going to do that, but I'm hoping they're going to they do it. <laughs> you know, people, you know, what's going to happen. I I'm, you know, I'm putting it out there. I'm putting it out there so that they, you know, will will do it. So, <laughs> and that would just be, you know, something that I would enjoy. Has um, that happened for you before? Um, it the- has not. Um, but I, one of my kind of things that I would love to have is like one of my movies or commercials be in Times Square, you know, like on one of the screens in Times Square. So, uh, you know, a billboard is super close to that, you know, billboard in Birmingham, Alabama is super close to, you know, Times Square, Times Times Square, New York. (laughs) Yeah. What about, we had had talked in the pregame about Hallmark movies. Is that something that you're kind of, I would love to do are Hallmark you, movies. Are I you love a horseshoe out there for the good luck? Are we trying? Throwing, oh, I'll, every day, every day. Um, I just I love all things Christmas, and Hallmark does it so well. You know, it's the the heart of Christmas uh, is what Hallmark is known for. So, um, yes, I it's that uh, dual. You know, I can shoot a gun, but I can also you know be that girl next door. Uh, in the Hallmark movies, I would love, love to do that. So, so you want to do Die Hard twisted with the love story of like Christmas in Vermont? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I probably just need to write my own uh, script, you know, and, and put both of those together. That would just be. Well, they've shot a couple in Connecticut, which which uh, oh. I didn't have. I didn't see any of it, but I did see the the. The big rigs coming into with the lights and all that. And oh my gosh! Like, I bet it's amazing. My um, my agent uh has submitted me for some Hallmark movies. I I've auditioned. She tries not to, you know, uh, you know, get me too hyped up beforehand. Yeah. You know, it's one of those like I'll let you know after you audition and that kind of stuff. But um, yeah. So she's she's great about that. I have a an agent in Nashville. And then I just got a manager out of Florida, so things are things are picking up. So you're yeah. like the black. You've got you've got your agents everywhere trying to hook yes. you up with stuff. Yes, my secret agent. <laughs> like the shadow agents report. <laughs> yes, yeah, but no, I I have a great agent and a great manager, and so um, they've I've I've been doing so many auditions this year. Uh, it's been it's been nuts. So um, do, do you have any coming up in the immediate near future that you can tease? Um, no, um, there's one that I just auditioned for uh, last week um, and it's it's on IMDb. So you can it's yep. already out there, but it's called Savannah and Pepperoni. And uh, I was uh, in the top three for uh being cast and uh it came down to the the callback and unfortunately i didn't get it but um there are other things in the works and they just they're coming weekly and uh, i i learned from that you know and i take it into the next audition you know and just i don't give up and uh you know because even in this business you hear no probably 90 percent of the time and yes, about 10% of the time. Yeah. You just want to be on the the end of that 10%, you know, more, more often. Do you get that moment though? Now, you know, you're filming these, these shorter film, these short films, you got the commercials and all that. Do you ever kind of go back in your mind and talk to that younger girl in the improv class and go, Hey, can you like kind of pinch me moment? Like, absolutely. Holy crap. Yes. If I, <laughs> if I would have known I probably would have done things so much differently just, but it's, it really is a learning process too, because I, you know, if I knew then what I know now, I would probably be in a totally different place, but you've, there are things you learn over time. um, And uh, it's, um, if I could go back and tell that, that girl, yeah, I would just be like, just, just stick with it, you know? And, and I did, I did. Um, but yeah, I, I think I would have had a lot more confidence than, uh, knowing what was ahead. Um, and I think that's no no regrets though. Right. Um, yeah, there, 
No, I would say no regrets. Um, I am definitely going in the direction, you know, I want to go. I never thought though, that I would be doing horror films. Um, <laughs> but it just, and when I started modeling, um, I wanted to do, you know, uh, print work and commercial work and things like that. And I kept getting calls for fitness. And so I ended up, you know, being in shape magazine and all because um, of my workout regimen and, you know, those kinds of things. And so I just, I had to go with it. So same thing with the horror genre. It's like, if, if that's who's calling, if you, if, yeah, I was just, I was just going to say that if you kept getting horror scripts, you wouldn't, you wouldn't no. turn them down. You'd be like, yeah, oh, I don't need it. No, I, I'll read it. Absolutely. And like I said, some of the things that I've learned on these sets, and getting to be involved in these kills and all the, you know, and I thought that I would not enjoy like the blood and guts and stuff, but I have. It's, it's just a part of telling the story and it's, it's so much fun. It's, uh, I, I learned to, oh, I can't tell too much, but. Don't tell um, too much, but tease, like kind of. Yeah, sure. Like um, how yeah. blood works and um, how those special effects and stuff come across and um, you, you really learn a lot about yourself when it comes to, you know, a kill scene and what you're capable of. And um, it, uh, you need to stick this knife in this guy's jaw and, <laughs> and kind of learn, Hey, I could do this if I had to. <laughs> right. Yes. And then how uh, the blood works as far as, um, the, the face you're supposed to make, uh, uh, Sam Hodge, uh, Hodges, uh, did, uh, reunion from hell too. Uh, he said that, uh, once you drink the blood and all you're supposed to make the face, uh, well not, you don't swallow it, but you have it in your mouth, you know, you, it, yeah. that, you know, and he said, uh, the face you make is like the face you make when going to the bathroom. So, <laughs> like That's what? Amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> look at it. That's actually a very interesting way to look at it, but some people <laughs> have multiple faces. Yeah, I, yep. <laughs> yes, yes. So, <laughs> and you're dead. No, I'm just kidding. Did you really freeze? Are you, did you really, what happened? Are you really holding this? Oh, okay, I think you I did apologize. I apologize. Wi-Fi conked out for a second. I apologize. So I'm not killing all of a sudden, you know, you, that smile just sort of permeated and, you know. I just froze. I was like, wait, are you still acting? Like I, I was still trying to decide. We got a, ha, 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 thanks, great. My, my girlfriend, Chelsea Langelier. That's, <laughs> uh, that's funny as hell, actually. <laughs> Whoops. That was awesome. I don't know exactly what happened, but it was awesome. Okay. Don't tell me it froze on the faces we made when we were laughing. It did. Oh, yes, Jesus. Yes, oh. Did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's funny. That's funny. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. You can't script real life. You know, reality that's... TV, no, because that's some of that some of that scripted. You can't script real life. <laughs> But anyway, as we were saying, blood is the face you make when you go to the bathroom. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm not going to. Oh, gosh. And it froze so you gotta, So you just kind of. Oh, don't tell me we froze again. Yeah, it's like sort of. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Every time you make a face, it's freezing up on you. So maybe we should move on from the. Move maybe we on. should move on from. The yeah, I think I think the I think the uh, higher power is saying, quit talking about the blood in the bathroom and all that stuff. It did. Your face was incredible. Well, I don't know who she's talking to. She may be talking to me, but she could be talking <laughs> to you, Kelly. I'm sure our faces were True. were priceless on that one. <laughs> oh, I usually don't get crazy. embarrassed, and I'm not really embarrassed. I'm more like just kind of like that, that kid on the stage that was like, "Oh crap, I forgot the line." <laughs> Forgot the line. See, see, it happened. It just it happens. It happens to the best of us. So you it just have to, to roll everybody. with it. Yeah, totally. And so you just have to learn to laugh at yourself. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I would love to talk to you again about anything, yeah. you know, coming up. And we're actually next week uh, we're doing Jean Claude Van Damme. We're going to be talking about any Jean Claude Van Damme movies. So, if the muscles from Brussels is anything that interests you, you're more, yeah. welcome, you're more than welcome to to join us on that one. I love some Jean Claude Van Damme. Yes. He was awesome. He was awesome. Yes. I mean, he might have been a little bit of a cheesy actor and stuff, but may, may have had his problems. <laughs> <laughs> but he was awesome. I mean, like even back in the day, uh, anybody that could do, you know, those fight scenes and uh, karate stuff and all, you know, it put him in a in a different bracket. And he's a good looking man too. So I mean, very good looking know. guy. Still, even yeah. though now he's now he's kind of you know the the the, the, the habits caught up to him. He does kind of look a little. But uh, I love I love Van Dam. Uh, yes, everything from blood sport to kickbox, even Death Warrant has its moments. Double Impact. Time Cop is actually my favorite Van Damme movie because it's the one where it actually shows this guy can actually act. Yeah, yeah. Because he had he has that ability to like listen with his eyes, like almost mm -hmm. just kind of that. What the hell is he thinking? Right. Yep. And you can see it. Yeah. 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 He was he was another one to to watch. So yeah. Great hair in that movie. I don't know if you remember Time Cop. He had that mullet, that nineties mullet. <laughs> <laughs> Which is coming back, you know. I see a lot of young kids with the the curly hair mullets and stuff. I'm just like, yep. There. I, I, I see a lot of younger kids rocking the Patrick Mahomes look. <laughs> you know, the the quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs. They got the headband and they got that. And yes. I, and have you seen the little the little cross dangly earring that has come back? Yeah, like, I've seen that. Really? Yeah, that was really? that was the thing. You remember that? I sure do. That was like, the sign okay. that you were a badass. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now when I see it, I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> it's, it's, you know. But the mullet the is, first time. The mullet is slowly. I've, I, I, you know, I, I know what you're talking about. I'm never going to have it. Okay. Nope. I'll rock the George Clooney. That's what I'm going to, you know. Okay. I'll, yeah. rock, I'll rock the salt and pepper. You have to walk. Oh, you have to. You have to do what works for you. You know, anybody that tries to do, you know, make it work some other ha some other way, it's just you can tell it's phony. So you just you got to do what works for you. You mean like when a when a guy has totally gray hair, and the next day they come in with coffee brown hair, coffee table. Mm. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, you should have just gone natural. Just yeah. just do it natural. Yeah. yeah. No, but yeah, next week we're doing Jean Claude and Blood Sports coming up. We're going to talk Kickboxer. Those movies you had to have grown. You did those are the. Oh, totally. Did you see yeah. him in Expendables Two with Stallone? No, no, I didn't. They Stallone in 2010 did a new franchise called The Expendables, where it was Sylvester Stallone, uh, Bruce Willis, and Schwarzenegger show up for little cameos. Jet Li, Dolph Lundgren, Jason Statham. And I then get was, that mixed up with like, is that red? There's there's one called red or something like that. Red there? was what red was uh Bruce Willis, Helen Mirren, and that other guy. Oh, and I always forget his name. Oh, okay, gotcha. But, but they're they're all the greats. I mean, they're like, all the, you know. that ensemble pieces. Yeah, and they're all great. Yes. Actors. They're all great yeah. action actors, and Helen Mirren has just been killing it for ever. Yes, that so, I um, I would love to. Yeah, be able to kill it like that as long as she has. That's that's amazing. She just did a movie not long ago with Ian McKellen, who's a he's great. Ian McKellen. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the heck was the name of the movie? But basically, they play elderly people who meet on an online dating site. But he's not all he appears to be. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's catfishing. Yeah, uh, yeah, but like in a. Um, very weird way not oh. um, i don't want to give too much away but yeah he's he's like a old-fashioned robber okay i might have checked that out then I forget the name of it i'll message it to you okay cool yeah, yeah. yeah but no in the second expendables it leads to the showdown between stallone and van damme and it's basically what you would picture a fight between the two of them the taunting stallone goes rocky you know the rib punches you know three oh yeah times Van Dam counters with the headbutt and then the spinning. He probably kick. does the kick that comes up. Yep. Yep. He hits it. He turns around and like, because it's an action movie, let's be honest. It's a little over the top, yeah. but yeah. 
but he hits yeah. him, you know, Van Damme hits it perfectly, and he just goes, Ow. Oh, it's so soon. I want my money's worth. You know, like, come on, get up. And Stallone do, yeah, coming right up. And then Stallone gets up, hits him again, just going back down. It's a good movie. I, I would highly recommend it if you were a fan of those action pieces. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I'll probably never do my Jean Claude Van Damme impression like that ever again. <laughs> just between us. <laughs> just between us and the, the, the viewers who. And suck. the rest of the world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Kelly, I appreciate you coming on tonight. I'd love to talk to you Thank again. You Where can people me. reach you if they want to see more of your work or just yeah. talk to you? Where can people reach yeah. you? Yeah, absolutely. You can find me on Facebook. It's Kelly Lane, L-A-Y-N-E. Uh, I'm also on IMDb, Kelly Lane. And then uh, on Instagram, uh, it's Kelly Lane 05. So. 05, like the year? Like, um, sure. That was always my number uh, playing sports. So I've just always gone with the number five and it's the number of grace and I, I need that. So. See, I was 14. Okay. First yeah. number I was ever given in town basketball. Okay. Yeah. But I always wanted to be 19, but then enough about that story. Joe Montana, he was 19 when he was with the Chiefs, but that's another oh. story for another day. I'm okay. A fan. I'm, a I'm a Patriots fan, sadly. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, we got to get that. Got to make sure everybody knows that. Yeah, we got to. <laughs> everyone's got to know that I'm I'm a Patriots fan. So reach you at IMDb, Instagram, Kelly Lane 05, and Facebook. Facebook, yeah. Yes, and thank you everyone who tuned in and watched tonight's episode of Bad Fair Health Entertainment. We'll be back next week to talk about the muscles from Brussels himself, Mr. Jean Claude Van Damme, and his filmography. Don't forget to check out Still Dead Illustrations on Facebook, uh, the designer of the Bad Fear Health Entertainment t-shirt. For Kelly Lane, I'm Tom. Have a good night, everybody.